Hey everybody, welcome to Ice Water Yoga. My name is Joe Pace. Uh, and today we're gonna be doing a little bit of a cool down and just a nice stretch that assumes that you are already warmed up. You already did your workout. You already did, ran a race. You already played a game. You're, you've, you've done something with your body. You're warm. Uh, and so we're gonna skip the warm up entirely and go straight to the warm down. Uh, and everything is gonna be low to the mat, nice and, nice and relaxed and nice and calming. Um, so you don't need any props and we'll start on our backs. So slowly take your, take your time getting onto your back. And then what we're gonna do is take both knees into the chest, nice and gentle. You can grab opposite knee. And you can hold here, just feeling the whole weight of your back resting against the ground. And then from here, we'll just take a few deep breaths. On an inhale, draw your knees away from your chest, extend your elbows out. And then exhale, pull your knees in towards your nose, nose towards knees. Feel the point of contact with your back in the floor get smaller. Inhale, open, roll your spine out. Exhale, pull in nice and gently. Nose doesn't have to touch the knees, but just feel the balancing point coming onto the smallest part of the back. Inhale, open. Exhale, completely emptying your lungs. Pull your knees to your nose. Inhale, open. Exhale, completely emptying the lungs, nose to knees. Last time, inhale, open, fill your lungs. Exhale, completely emptying your lungs. Pull your knees into your nose. Stay here. Take both hands to your right knee, extend your left leg long, and then roll your shoulders down onto the mat. Pull your right knee in towards your right armpit. All right, so specifically right armpit, you're drawing your, your knee right to it. And then you're breathing into the inseam of your leg. So draw the breath into your inner thigh, hip area, deep into the right hip. If you can breathe into your back, feel the upper back spreading. And then with the nice deep breath established and continuing with it, start to roll out your right ankle. So we're rolling in a clockwise direction, toes over to the left, then up then right, then down. Just feel the rotation of the ankle. Continuing to pull on the right knee towards the right armpit. And then I'll switch directions with the ankle, rolling it from left and over. So counterclockwise. Continuing to pull the right knee into the armpit. So we're just being efficient here, doing a lot of things at once. Shoulder blades spread wide on your mat or on the floor. And then bring your ankle back to neutral and just go forward and back with the ankle. So flexing the toes towards the knee, extending the toes away. Continuing to breathe deeply, filling the lungs slowly, emptying the lungs slowly, ideally through your nose. Okay, last one here, inhale. And exhale, bring your left knee back into your chest. Let's pull the nose into the knees like before. And then we'll take the right leg long, left knee to left armpit, and just breathe here for a moment, extending the right leg long all the way onto the mat, pressing the, the right calf against the mat, and then pulling gently left knee towards left armpit. Feel the left hip opening slightly. And just find the place here. So before we do that ankle stuff, find the place where this stretch is gonna be most productive for you. That's really what this is all about. You're personalizing how this feels on your end. And then let's start with the ankle roll, starting counterclockwise to start. So continuing to breathe deeply through the nose. Let this be a bit of a meditation in addition to a, a little bit of a physical practice here. We're trying to recover not only physically, but throughout our mind and our psyche as well, calming the, audit, the, the nervous system as best we can. So rolling the ankle, drawing the biggest circle you can with your toe. So finding that end range of motion in the ankle, get all that stuff out. And then we'll reverse the direction, continuing to pull left armpit 
or left knee to left armpit, keeping both shoulder blades pressing firmly against the mat. And you're rolling clockwise here. Again, slower, better, allowing us to draw the biggest circle we can, exploring that end range of motion. Coming back to center, extend the toes out and draw the toes back to your left knee. Continuing to move, you can coordinate this movement with your breath. So on the inhales, the toes will draw towards your knee. Exhale, toes will extend out. Again, exploring the end range of motion, really flexing and extending. Feel the calf and the front of the shin turn on. Cool, last one here. All right, bring both knees into your chest, hug it in. And then exhale, place both feet against the mat. We're gonna press the, both elbows against the mat as well. We'll take a gentle back bend. So knees will stay right over your heels. And so there may be a tendency for your knees to draw away from each other when we come into the pose. Try to continue to keep your knees over your ankles. Don't let them splay out or knock in towards each other. Press the triceps against the mat, shoulders pressing firmly against the mat as well as you lift your hips. Feel the knees hovering <clears throat> right over the heels and you can press into your triceps to just support the pose. There should be no pressure in the neck. You're breathing deep and you're just enjoying this time. This isn't the most physically intense practice. So let it be just an exploration of your body more than it is um, trying to achieve anything. Just explore what this feels like. Let your body restore itself. Let's take a few of those in a flow. So on an exhale, we lower. Inhale, press the hips high, let your belly expand. Exhale, lower. Inhale up, let your belly expand like a balloon up to the ceiling. Exhale, lower. Inhale up. Exhale, lower. Inhale up. Exhale, lower, nice and moderate. This will be our last one. Inhale up, fill the belly. Exhale, lower. From here, draw the knees in towards your chest, hug it in, knees to nose, nose to knees. And then from here, keep the right knee in towards your chest, pull it in. So now as opposed to right knee to right armpit, we're drawing it straight into the chest. Feel the different area of your hip being opened here. It's more frontal hip and, and glute as opposed to deep external hip. So from here, we're gonna take the knee, pull it directly in and we can scoot our left hip underneath us as we bring our right knee across the body for a gentle twist, thinking more about keeping your right shoulder planted against the mat than bringing your right knee to the floor. Don't even worry about bringing the right knee to the floor. Just keep both shoulders pressing against the mat. You can keep your arms like field goal posts and then just breathe deep into your spine. Let the spine release. And so you're breathing deep here. Don't forget about that piece of it. This isn't just a stretch. This isn't just a warm down. This is really a, a, a mental exercise too. So we're staying focused on the breath, working on more than just our physical body. And what's nice about twists is it actually creates extension and length in the spine. And you may think it's actually more crunching, but what it's doing is it's stretching the muscles of the spine in a direction that is natural and organic to the spine. So it, it really creates more space for us. Last deep, full breath here. And then, then we bring it back into center. Hug both knees into the chest. And then exhale, right leg long. We're gonna take the left knee across the body. But before we do that, just hug the left knee into the chest. Feel the deep hip stretch. Maybe take your nose to your knee. Knee to nose. Maybe point the toes, extend through the ankles, get a little ankle action here. 
And then from here, we'll bring the left knee across the body, maybe scoop the right hip underneath you. All right, for a little bit more control of the pose, a little bit more alignment. Okay, so keeping left shoulder planted against the mat, maybe you get a few cracks. Uh, arms like airplane or arms like field goal posts, keeping the left shoulder blade firmly planted against the mat. If you feel it coming up, you've gone too far. We want to keep the twist in the middle and the upper back as opposed to our low back. And that's what we do that by keeping the shoulder planted against the mat. And so your breaths are deep and actually part of the twist so that you'll notice on your inhales, you'll feel the twist getting a little bit tighter, a little bit more, um, you, you'll feel it more physically. And then on your exhales, you'll feel maybe an opportunity to deepen a little bit more into the twist if that feels like it's okay in your body right now. Never forgetting about your deep breath. Just keeping the back firmly planted against the floor. Last full deep breath here. Bring it back to center. Hug both knees into your chest. Knee nose to knees, knees to nose. And then from here, extend both legs away from you and place the soles of your feet against one another. So your knees are going to splay out from one another and you can choose how far your heels are from your body. So if you're feeling like you want to get a pretty intense stretch here deep in the hips, draw your heels closer to your body, press the soles of your feet together, let the knees splay apart. If you're looking for something a little bit more general and, and, and more restorative feeling and a gentle feeling, bring the soles of the feet and the heels further away from you. You can extend them all the way out as far as you'd like, just finding that place in your hips that feels productive and good. We're just going to breathe here for a moment, pressing the soles of the feet together wherever you are. So you'll notice as you press the soles of the feet in against one another, the hips will turn on, the hamstrings will turn on, and even the quads will turn on. And then that'll allow you to draw the knees further away from one another with more control, with more engagement. And that's what we want. We create an isometric uh, contraction in the muscle to then make the, the, the range of motion we're creating in our practice more functional, right? This is a, a range of motion we can access and it's a little bit more productive as opposed to a passive range of motion that we actually can't use in our day-to-day -day life. From here, draw the knees in towards one another. We'll bring the right knee into the chest. We can keep the sole of the left foot planted against the ground and we'll extend the right heel to the ceiling and we'll grab the right hamstring. So from here, if it feels okay for you, you can extend the left leg long. You'll feel your left hip flexor, the front of your left hip turn on and get a little bit of a stretch here. And you can grab the back of your right knee or up the, up the calf if you'd like. If you're super flexible, both hands can reach the foot. Um, not, not showing off here, just showing what it looks like. But we, what we want to do is keep the right knee extended. If you can't reach your right hamstring, you bend your knee and then you can just reach towards it, drawing your knee in towards your chest as best you can, continuing to extend the right heel out away from you. All right, so you'll feel that stretch in the hamstring pretty quickly if you've got tight hamstrings. Again, bending in the knee, drawing the knee closer to the chest if that feels, as it feels appropriate, and then extending the right heel towards the ceiling. You don't even have to grab it, you'll feel it in your right hamstring. If you can interlace the fingers behind your right hamstring, do so and just gently pull in, keeping every corner of your back, upper back and low back, planted against the mat. You can flex your toes back in towards your face. Gentle pulling. And again, we don't want to pull ourselves so deep into it that it becomes counterproductive, but a little bit of pull is going to create a little bit more range, um, a little bit more opening, especially if we're contracting the right hamstring. So con you can actually physically feel like you're contracting the right hamstring lightly, nothing too intense, and then gently pull. Full deep breaths. 
Gently bend the right knee, sole of right foot to the floor. We'll bring the left knee into the chest. Extend the left heel high to the ceiling if that feels okay for you. You can keep the right knee bent if that's, gonna, if that's actually going to allow you to extend your left heel to the ceiling. Bringing the right, the hands behind the left hip, the, the left hamstring. Extending right leg if that feels good and just create your pose. We, again, we talked about if you have the tight hamstring, bend the knee. Grab what you can or just extend left heel away from you, feeling the stretch in the hamstring, continuing to draw closer towards a straight leg, heel to ceiling, toes back to your face, every corner of your back pressing against the mat and then the pulling within the contraction. So contract gently your left hamstring, nothing too crazy. You don't want to give yourself a, a Charlie horse here, but pull within that isometric tension. Your breath is deep, your mind is calm. And finding a place of moderate intensity, something that feels somewhat intense, but appropriate for the situation. We don't, we're not working out here, <laughs> but we are working. Okay, gently release sole of left foot to the floor and then we can roll up to a, a tabletop position and we're going to take a few lunges, just really basic simple lunges. So coming onto the hands and knees, we'll take the left foot forward, all right, and so from here we'll take the right knee right underneath our right hip against the floor. You can put a towel under your knee if it feels like too much, if you're, if you're not using a mat, maybe that'll be necessary. And then we'll come up with hands to hip. So we've been laying down a lot. This, is, uh, this may feel a little different, but it'll be pretty cool feeling. Really nice restorative pose. So keeping the hands at the hips, we want to make sure that our, that, our, that our hip points are pointing straight up. So they're not dipping forward. So we're not ducking into the low back. Keep the hip points lifted. And then if you can keep your hip points lifted, you can shift the hips forward and up. Don't think about dipping them down. Think about hip points, these little bony parts of the, of the hips coming up and forward. You'll feel a beautiful stretch in the front right hip flexor. You can take the arms overhead if that feels okay for you. And then maybe take the chest up and back. So your hip points are up and forward. Your chest is up and back. Breathing into your rib cage. Feel the front right hip flexor opening. For two. One, plant the right hand down, left hand to left knee. Keep the right knee against the floor and just take a gentle twist here. So we want to extend through the right shoulder. Don't slump into the right shoulder. Extend both the right elbow and the right shoulder. Twist it open to the left. If, you, if you're feeling pretty good, in, I mean, we're, this is not... Um, uh, necessary, but if you'd like, you can take the right knee off the floor. Right knee to floor is all good. Okay. From here, we'll bring the right knee uh, directly under the right hip again if it's scooted back, and then we'll draw the left heel away from us. You can keep a bent knee if that feels better for you. Otherwise, extend the left knee straight. Chest draws up and forward. Left hip draws back. This is known as Ardha Hanumanasana. It's like half split, basically. So we're really focusing on this left hamstring. In this pose, you draw your left toes towards you, towards your body, and you engage your left quad. You'll feel your left kneecap lift, and you extend or feel like you're extending your left heel away from you. So it's lengthening from the heel out, drawing back with the left hip. The result is a really nice stretch in the back of the leg. Continuing to engage the left quad for three. Deep breaths, two. One, bend into the left knee. We'll just switch sides simply. So coming through tabletop, take the right foot forward. And then from here, setting up for our low lunge. All right. Left knee underneath left hip, left ankle underneath right knee. And then we come up hands to hips, aligning our hip points. Another way to think about this is if you take your left hand the front of your left hip and the back of your right hand to your sacrum, which is the base of your spine, right above your, <laughs> right above your butt crack, to be totally 
uh, to give you a visual, <laughs> that little bony part, that flat bone right there, so that's, what you're, that's your sacrum. You'll place the back of your hand to your sacrum, left hand to your left hip flexor, the front of your left hip, and your hands the, should be exactly perpendicular to the floor and parallel to one another. That's how you know your hips are, are in proper alignment. If they're scooting forward, your hands are no longer perpendicular to the floor. You want them straight up, straight up and down. And then again, parallel to one another. So keeping that, we'll keep the hips lifted. We can take the arms overhead. Again, thinking about chest up and back, hip points up and forward. That may feel like you're sinking forward into the left hip. That's all good. Just as long as you're feeling a deep hip stretch, deep breaths through the nose, fill your lungs, feel your breath as part of the pose. Hands back down, left hand underneath left shoulder, right hand to right knee, gently twist it open. Again, option to take the left knee off the mat, right knee over right ankle, just twist it open gently wherever you are, but you want to keep your left hip lifting. You don't want your left hip to drop so far down. Really the same principle as when we had our twist lying on our back on the ground. Want the twist to be felt in the mid upper back. Hands to the floor. We'll take that Ardha Hanumanasana, that half split, right heel to the mat, right hip draws back, engage your quad. Now it's all good to have a bent right knee. Just find a place where you can feel a stretch in your right hamstring. You can continue to engage your right hamstring from this position. Harder to engage the quad here, but as long as you're engaging the hamstring and then stretching into it, that's gonna be your most productive stretch. So draw your right heel away from you, right hip back, isometric engagement in your right hamstring. If you have a straight right knee, engage your right quad, chest is up and forward, right heel is forward, right hip is back, toes to your face. For five, four, three, two, and one, bend into your right knee. We'll come back to tabletop. One last little sequence here. Hands underneath your shoulders, index fingers parallel to one another. On an inhale, lift your chest, lift your tailbone, chin rises. Exhale, spread your shoulder blades apart, dip your tailbone down, cat pose. So you're stretching your shoulder blades apart. Inhale, back up, chest lifting, back caving in, heart forward. Exhale, the opposite movement, tailbone down, spreading shoulder blades. Inhale up, two more. Exhale back. Inhale. And then exhale. Coming back to neutral, we'll finish in a, a low squat. So um, a few options here. We want to make sure our heels are on the ground. All right, so ideally your pose would look like this. This is known as malasana, just a low squat. All right, so if you feel like you can't get your heels on the ground, you can point your toes out for, from one another, bring your feet a little bit wider, and then sit down into your hips. You may feel as though it feels better to put your hands on the ground, lift your hips a little higher, and then with the control of your hands and with more weight bearing in your hands, you can sit the hips lower, feel the hips opening. We just wanna make sure the heels are planted into the ground. We don't wanna be lifted up onto our toes. So find a place where you can, with bent knees, Place the hands on the mat, lower the hips. Once you feel like you can drop your hips between your legs, maybe the hands come in towards center. Maybe you can press your elbows out wide to spread the knees apart from one another. Really nice hip stretch. It's pretty active actually. We'll be here for three, two, one, sit it down. Soles the feet together, sitting up. We took this lying down before. Baddha Konasana, bound angle pose. So we're just, so, I mean, butterfly pose if, if we're uh, going back to gym class. We'll press the, the soles of the feet together. Knees will splay apart. 
you may be bunched up here and that's okay. What we wanna make sure we're doing is lifting through the chest, staying tall in the chest. And then from this place, we can draw the feet away from us, which will feel pretty relieving if you're pretty tight in the inseam of your legs. From here, any spot, any distance of heels away from your body, you can grab the ankles, make sure you're lifting through the chest tall. Strong, deep breath. I'm gonna bring my heels in a little bit closer. If you press the soles of your feet in towards one another, that'll give you a little bit of strength to open a little bit more. Okay. So we've, we've done a good amount of stuff today. This is a really nice warm down. A lot of the stuff we did was warming, especially as we started. We did what was really a pretty um, active uh, warm up with the knees to nose stuff. Uh, this was hopefully uh, something that felt really good in your body, something that you can continue to come back to when you want to just warm down, in control, find your deep breath, get a little opening in the hips, a lot of stuff in the lower body, a little bit in the back. All right. Again, thank you so much. I appreciate your time and your effort and especially your patience. Thank you. Namaste.